So today I'm going to be talking to you guys, it's a little different than survival analysis, which I did in the workshop. It's neuroimaging analysis completely done in R. All right, so to give a little bit of background about myself, I am a professor at Whale Cornell in the Division of Biostatistics. I've been a professor for two whole weeks, so I have no clue what I'm doing. But thank you, thank you. <laughs> but hopefully I'll, I'll get the hang of it and I'll, I'll have that down a little better soon. Uh, but before I went to academia, I actually worked as an industry data scientist. So I worked at a small startup company called Covera Health. And then I worked over at Flatiron Health. I think they're one of the sponsors here. Um, so I was working on the quantitative science team there. So I have a little bit of experience in industry and um, some experience in the academic realm. All right. But what I'm going to talk to you guys today about is working with structural magnetic resonance imaging completely in R. So how many people know what structural magnetic resonance imaging is? Not very many people, so I'm very thankful that I have my next couple of slides that will introduce you to this data. So structural MRI of the brain is used in clinical practice to diagnose disease and monitor disease progression. So I have three examples of structural MRI up right now. So these are axial slices of the brain, so they've been sliced this way. The front of the brain is the top of the image, and the back of the brain is the bottom of the image. On the far left, I have a patient who has brain cancer. So you can see the tumor in their brain. Uh, in the center, this is a patient who has multiple sclerosis. Their brain has lesions, these like hyper intense areas on the brain. And on the far right, this is a person who suffered from a stroke, which you can see the area with the stroke. And so these structural images are what's used in clinical practice to kind of follow patients and diagnose disease. Uh, they're just high resolution images of the brain. I'm not dealing with functional MRI. Functional MRI is MRI taken over time. So you have many, many different images taken quickly with like less spatial resolution. These have high spatial resolution. And so all of us here are, you know, interested in numbers, interested in data. So where does the data from these images come from? So I've blown up a little box on the image, which you can see right here. And I've shown where the data is. So each one of the voxels or pixels in this image corresponds to a number. Areas that are darker in the image have lower numbers. Areas that are brighter have higher numbers. And so if I have one single slice, this is again an axial slice, I have about 38,000 voxels on that slice. But the cool thing about brain imaging data, you don't just get one slice of the brain, you get a picture of the entire brain made up of many, many different slices. And so now I have about 7 million voxels. So I'm starting to get what I consider big data. I think like other people have much bigger data, but this is big to me. Um, <laughs> and then when you have a structural MRI study taken, you don't just get one image of your brain taken, but you will get multiple images of your brain taken with different contrast to kind of highlight um, different areas of the brain and so you can kind of, I think of it as looking at the brain with different lenses so you can kind of see things um, with these different contrasts. So this is an example of the fluid attenuated inversion recovery, the T2 weighted, the proton density, and the T1 weighted image which are really commonly taken when you have a structural MRI. And so now I'm up to about 28 million voxels so I've got quite a bit of data going on for just one subject. All right. So I've been working on neuroimaging analysis for about a decade, and so I'm going to say like back in the day to refer to 10 years ago when I started working on this. Um, back in the day, you used to use a bunch of different neuroimaging softwares to do your analysis. And I would write this huge bash script where I would call FSL, um, it's a program that does neuroimaging analysis, and do one thing. Then I would call a different program, ANTS, and I would kind of piece these all together. And I had the messiest code that you've ever seen. And so somebody went and they solved this problem for me. So how many people have used bioconductor before? All right. How about neuroconductor? One for, oh yeah, because you came to my tutorial last week. <laughs> okay, I was like, oh, you've used it. Excellent. All right, so it's one person, two people have used, th three. Three people have used neuroconductor. That was like three more than I thought. Um, so neuroconductor is like the analogous of uh, bioconductor, but for using neuroimaging data. It's an open source platform for wrapping testing and dissemination of um, imaging software for neuroimaging. Um, 
basically there's like large educational component where people go around giving education about how to use these packages. And it's just like one central repository for all the R packages to do imaging analysis. And so here's the website, and here's a list of some of the packages that um, are on there. And this is the team that developed it. So it's um, Adi German, John Michelli, Brian Caffo, and Ciprian Kranichianu. So these are the guys, the core guys who developed Neuroconductor. And so they're the, the visionaries behind this, this great thing. Um, and so what Neuroconductor allows you to do is to now do all of your neuroimaging analysis completely in R. And it all starts with this one command. So if you just type source and this website, you're all ready to go working in Neuroconductor. Just type this into R. Um, and so I'm going to show you a little bit of analysis with neuroimaging data to kind of whet your appetite for maybe working with this. So neuroimaging data is saved as nifty files. And nifty files are just files that have a .nii or .niigz um, extension. It's the most commonly uh, used type of file in neuroimaging data analysis. And they are just files that save those three-dimensional arrays of data that I was talking about when we work with neuroimaging data. And so if you want to go ahead and do this, the, the like, most useful package, or I think the coolest package, no, nah, it's not the coolest package on Neuroconductor. I have one on there that I think is <laughs> a little cooler. Uh, but it's a, a really, like, this is like the workhorse. Um, and it's oro.nifty. So if you just type neuroinstall after you've installed Neuroconductor, you can install any package you want from Neuroconductor. So I'm going to install neuro.nifty and just use it like I normally use a library. And so oro.nifty goes ahead and writes and reads nifty files, and then it also has really great ways for visualizing this data. And so I'm going to use an example. So if you guys want to go, if you get super excited after this presentation and you want to go do some neuroimaging analysis, I would lead you to this website right here. So this is the Kirby 21 data set. And basically, we have uh, scan, rescan data from subjects. So they go in, they get one scan, and then they go in and get a second scan. So we could see if there's any differences uh, from the scanner uh, between those two different scans. And so it's like a free data source where you can get started working with this data immediately. And so I'm going to read this in with the oro.nifty package. And so the function I'm going to use is read nifty. And so I just type read nifty and the name of my file. And so now I have this image in my R space, which is my neuroimaging data. If I look at the dimension of that, it's 170 by 256 by 256. So this is that three-dimensional array. But like, the main thing I'm always interested in is cool pictures. So I want to see this data and kind of visualize what's going on. And oro.nifty has this really nice function called the orthographic function. And so if I type orthographic image, I get this guy. And this, I think, is just so cool because it's an axial slice of the brain, a sagittal, and a coronal slice of the brain. So we get kind of the idea of what's going on three-dimensionally. And I can actually publish these. So like, if I'm doing an analysis, like this picture, I think it looks good enough for a journal. Do you guys think so? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it just came out of like one function from R. I just typed orthographic uh, image, and I got this. And so um, yeah, so ortho or, uh, the oro.nifty package has a great way to immediately impress your friends by visualizing some neuroimaging data. And then um, once you've read these images in, it is just data. So you can go ahead and start um, kind of doing some operations on it to analyze it. So I could just type summary image, and it'll give me a summary of the intensities within that image. I could plot the data. So if I go ahead and take it out of that three-dimensional array and turn it into a vector and save it in a data frame, so I'm going to call that image.frame, I can use ggplot to visualize the intensities in this image. So um, there's tons of zeros in this image. Why are there tons of zeros? The background, right? That back background. So I went ahead and tried to get rid of it by like thresholding by taking intensities over 5,000 only. There's still a little peak because not all of those are a value of zero. There's a little bit of variation in it. But now you can kind of start to see um, maybe two distinct, if you take away that background blip, two distinct distributions. And those are the distribution of the white matter and the gray matter. So you can start to visualize the data. We have like 
nice pictures of it, but we're also um, kind of working with the numbers themselves and visualizing those. And so all that from just one package, which is pretty cool. Uh, there's also this package uh, that John Michelli, the guy who created Neuroconductor, um, made called FSLR. So I can install FSLR. And FSLR is basically just a set of system commands. So you still need to have this um, neuroimaging software called FSL installed on your machine, but you don't have to mess around with learning all the syntax for FSL. R will call FSL for you using the FSLR package and perform all the operations that you want. So you just like, I forgot all of my syntax for FSL because I am an FSLR user. So if FSLR ever goes away, I will be very, very, um, things will be good for me. Um, but yeah, so what does FSLR do? So when data comes off of a scanner, they come in different orientations. So right here I have two axially oriented things, the flare and the PD, and then two uh, sagittally oriented images. So if I want to talk about a voxel across all four of these images, it's impossible because it's not in the same space. So I want to move all of these images to the same space. I also notice that there is a skull on the image, and I might not be interested in skull tissue. I might only be interested in doing an analysis on brain tissue. So I might want to remove the skull. And so FSLR allows you to do all of that, completely in R, with just like three or four commands. So entirely in R. Um, and so those commands are FSL bias correct, FSL bet, and flirt. And so you can string those together and do that analysis. And so just to show you like what's going on under the hood, I mentioned this before, but these are all just system commands. So we have the software FSL that's running all these things and these are pretty complicated algorithms. So instead of rewriting those in R, we are just going to use system commands to call FSL through R but you can just type in the R commands and it makes it much easier for you. All right, uh, so I gave you like a little rundown of like what we could do in these cases, but if you really wanna dig deep into this and like learn the background and how to work with these things, uh, we have a book chapter called The Statistical Analysis of Structural MRI Neuroimaging Data, which goes through all of the steps for how to do the neuroimaging analysis and contains R code for doing that. And then um, I'm also a co-instructor on a Coursera class called Neurohacking in R that goes through how to do all of this analysis completely in R. So this is a great way to get started if you want to start working on this data and like, you know, really dive in. And we've got lots of access to like open source data sets so you can get started, get started on some projects um, and, and those types of things. Okay. So now I want to talk about one of the packages that I have that's hosted on Neuroconductor. So we were talking about um, structural MRI, and in the beginning I was talking about patients who have multiple sclerosis. So patients who have multiple sclerosis have lesions in their brain. And these lesions are what are used in clinical trials as like a primary outcome. So if you want to test the difference between two different treatments, we'll often look at the volume of lesions or the volume of lesion change in those patients to determine what treatment is doing better than another treatment. And so um, I've highlighted here where those lesions are in the brain. In a typical clinical trial setting, a radiologist actually sits down and goes through and highlights where every single one of those lesions is. And as we were saying, these, these brain images have like 180 slices. So they've got to go through 180 slices and manually delineate how many lesions are on there. And so how long do you think that takes? Two to, oh, you think it takes longer than it does. <laughs> I was, that, whenever I say something like, how much do you think it costs? And somebody will be like, oh, $200. I'll be like, oh, it's only 50 but I thought it was really expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, but for this, um, so two days, great guess. Uh, it takes an hour. Um, <laughs> so it takes, a, a radiologists are fast and, and good, at, good at doing this, and they have to do it a lot but it takes a whole hour. <laughs> and um, 
I don't know how much, I've always tried to do this for like this particular talk, like look up how much a radiologist makes uh, per hour, but I've never, I don't think they get paid hourly and I, I haven't been able to like get a calculation. So I wanted to get like some monetary amount to do that, but I don't know, when you've got a study and you've got um, a couple hundred patients in that study, that's a couple hundred hours of radiologist work and that, that's a long time. Um, and so that kind of makes the call for having automated algorithms that can just do this, that can identify those areas in the brain that have lesions in them. And so that's a project that I worked on during my PhD thesis. Um, the software is called OASIS, and so it's housed as an R package on um, Neuroconductor, so you can just do Neuro Install OASIS, Library OASIS. And right here, I've used orthographic again. This is a patient who has multiple sclerosis. And you'll notice there is a lesion in the brain um, right by the ventricle. I'll, I'll highlight it with OASIS in just a second. But this is the output for my algorithm. So it actually creates these binary maps of where lesions are in the brain. And so that's um, one of the examples of some of the things that are hosted on Neuroconductor. There's other things for um, like other diseases, like um, stroke segmentation, um, like brain cancer segmentation, and, and those types of things. But I would really encourage everybody to kind of check this data out and check out Neuroconductor and see what type of things are on there. All right. Thank you so much.